Hello viewers, just want to do a little bit of a talk on generators. Uh, many people have generators on homesteads, uh, whether off grid and that sort of thing. And I met a friend's place where he's got no grid power or solar power and he uses ge a generator to run his appliances inside. One of the problems that we've encountered, or he's encountered, are these particular types of generators in that they are fully enclosed. Yes, they have inverter technology to give pure sine wave, for which most appliances need these days. And it's a combustion engine. Now, that raises its own problems with the temperatures we've been getting so far this summer around here. Uh, combustion engines need a lot of ventilation to keep them cool, they're air cooled. And if you have a look at this, it's all enclosed in a plastic case. That's the exhaust system there, so you can well imagine how hot it's going to get inside that case with the exhaust system coming out of the actual engine block. The problem is that many of these types of generators, and yes campers do use them, uh, caravanners or trailer campers, whatever they're called this week in whatever country, they do use them. I found this with a lot of my radio equipment over the years that when they build these things, when they make them, and it's made in, this one's made in China, they use components that operate on the very, very top level of their tolerances, including heat tolerances. So you can well imagine that running these generators in the temperatures we've been getting, and they have to be running outside, not inside a building. Yes, you can cover them and all that sort of thing, but even the ambient ground temperature is excessive for air cooling on these types of generators. The components start to break down. And part of the inverter system on many of these is used as the ignition system on these generators. Well, this one's a pull start. It's a gasoline one or petrol one. So that's when they begin to fail. Uh, my friend's had this for about two months and around about week five or six he started having problems starting it. You can see there's a lot of plastic fittings on there, the pull start, the fuel, the choke and all that sort of stuff, all plastic inside and this is all subjected to heating from the combustion engine inside. So what's it going to do? Well this one is still under warranty, it's going to be returned, it's got a Bridge and Stratton engine on it. Well don't know where they're made these days. In the last week or so we've had a look at some other types of generators. Uh, the ones I generally use, I do have a couple of these, and uh, but I don't use them very often. They just sort of back up to our main diesel generator if, if something goes wrong. Bearing in mind that in the temperatures we have, um, the most important thing is to keep your refrigeration going. You don't want to lose a whole heap of food when you lose power. They also use to run other things like TVs and all that sort of stuff, all the bling stuff, computers and stuff which needs a very very stable sine wave power supply, 240 volts 50 hertz here in Australia. So we're going to have a look at another generator which I did a bit of research on for, for Steve and uh, we'll, we'll have a look at the difference on it. Back in a sec. Okay. From my experience with generators on our off-grid block we had many years ago, we had a generator similar to this mounted on a trailer. We needed it to supply power to our bore which had an electric pump at the bottom of the floor about 100 feet down, down the bore. And we had some very very hot temperatures out there and we used to run it for probably an hour, or half an hour, depending on how much water we needed to fill the, the holding tank up the top. The difference being is, is if it's a combustion engine, and you can see on here, combustion engines, they're not water cooled, have this sort of thing on it. Okay, it needs airflow around it to keep the engine within operating temperature specs. The inverter technology, I think, is somewhere in this area. It's got plenty of air around it. And the other thing is with this generator, it's easier to service. You've got the air filter here. Um, see if we can get around the other side. Yep. 
you've got a a fuel bowl there which uh, you can take out and and uh, keep your fuel clean before it goes up in the carburetor uh, oil fill and that sort of thing the main thing is that this has better airflow around it to keep the engine temperature and components much much cooler than the previous one I showed you the other one I, the, I showed you the problem is that when you want to get in there and service oil change the oil there's your oil plug there there's one on the other side um, there's also a drain plug there to drain the oil out of the sump on the other ones the first one is in this video it becomes a problem because they are so compact that you've virtually got to pull the whole casing apart to get to the servicing components such as air filters fuel filters um, any other problems that may crop up there including the spark plug and believe me it is a pain in the butt so the open cradle generators at least for our temperatures and our climate our seasons particularly in the summer months are much much better they can handle hot weather better than um, the fully enclosed ones that's a spark plug there quite easy to get to with a plug spanner and most of it is all metal whereas in the enclosed ones a lot of the parts are plastic inside including fuel hoses anything else uh, that requires plastic covering and that sort of thing this one here too uh, you've got an air vent on the back end of the dynamo or gen generator component if you want to it helps to keep it cool because they do run a bit hot depending on your loading and that also helps to keep dust and crap out of the uh, dynamo itself this one's 240 volts uh, pure sine wave which is what is needed to run most electrical appliances these days it's all open so it's got better air circulation around it to keep it cooler than the one I showed you previously in this video they may be a little bit bigger a little bit heavier but around here with natural disasters storms bushfires we lose power and that sort of thing you want a generator that's reliable it's not going to fail you and it's much much easier to service oil changes clean your filters spark plug changes and so on this one is a, is a pull start it's not battery start so um, these are a much better, des better design for our summer temperatures okay folks that's uh, that's a bit of a review on the generators for here in Australia different countries different types of generators um, some work better in colder conditions and some are designed to work better in hotter conditions such as this one rather than this type over here this type are not suitable for working um, efficiently or reliably or reliable in the very hot temperatures we get uh, in our summer months and we're talking up around about 40 degrees C or more admittedly um, it, yes we can put it under shade cover but it's a ground temperature the heat reflection off the ground that really kills these so that's just a bit of review and that's from my experience with generators over the last 20 odd years uh, these are becoming more common now uh, from camping stores uh, you know, the big hardware franchises whereas the open cradle one I just showed you uh, we actually had to go to a uh, tradie store a tradesman use those sort of generators when they're working the power tools and stuff off grid and tradies need reliable equipment so in recent times uh, tradies with uh, generators on the back of their utes and trucks and all that sort of thing I have not seen any of these type I've seen the open cradle ones that uh, we just reviewed in the, um, the video all right viewers that's a take on generators uh, do your homework depends what you use them for where they're used for seasonal conditions temperatures that sort of thing thanks very much